or we could already be in that simulation. What are your yes. what are your thoughts on the simulation theory? I wrote a paper about this before, and in that paper, I was pretty on the fence about it. And I tried to just apply the tools of Bayesian statistics to this problem. So Bayesian statistics is kind of our most objective way of evaluating hypotheses and and weighing them against each other. And as far as I'm aware, no one had ever done that before. So I thought it would be an interesting exercise to do it. There's basically two scenarios. One scenario is that simulation technology is basically impossible. It, it's not possible to ever simulate a reality that's so convincing you wouldn't be able to distinguish it, right? Because that's the for me to be simulated right now, I'd have to not be able to tell that I was simulated. That that technology is just, you know, we talked about limits of technology. There may be a limit to technology that simply prevents that from happening. If if we're in that scenario, then of course the probability that we are not simulated is a hundred percent, because it's simply not possible. There is the other scenario that this technology is possible. In which case you have one reality sat right at the top, which is base reality, the true reality. And then you have a whole swarm of realities which are all simulated underneath that. So let's say there is um, N, N simulated realities and one true reality. So the probability that you would be in true reality would be one divided by N. Now that's the scenario that when you hear like Elon Musk talk about, it, he often focuses on that. So he just says the probability we were simulated is, you know, Infin, you know, it's almost 100%. Or in other words, the probability we're not simulated is infinitesimal. It's one divided by n, and n could be very, very large. The odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. But that's only one scenario. So the thing I just really want to point out is that we don't know that scenario is possible. There's this other scenario. So when you take the two scenarios together, there's a 50% chance, I would say, just a priori, before you have any information, your most objective way we choose priors is to give everything even weight. So you'd say there's a 50% chance that we're in scenario A, where we're guaranteed not to be simulated, and there's a 50% chance we're in the, in, the ver in the scenario where we're almost certainly simulated. But there's a small chance we're not. And so when you add those two probabilities together, you basically have like 50% plus 0.0001%. It ends up being greater than 50%. So therefore, chances are it's slightly more likely that you would be not simulated overall than simulated. So that was my contribution just to sort of work through the math and apply that prior. But it's, that prior is the objective prior, what we'd call, but somebody might have a different prior. So you could have your own prior that's, well, no, it's, it's, it will definitely, it, I'm giving it a 90% chance that we're going to be simulated. And that's just up to you. Anyone can choose their own prior. But normally in objective based and inference, you just apply even weights to everything. So I've been th I, I wrote a paper about that, but more recently I've been thinking about something that I think is a really brilliant insight by Sean Carroll. Uh, maybe some of your listeners know Sean Carroll. He has a podcast called Mindscape. He's also very well known on many TV shows and books. He wrote, he wrote The Biggest Ideas in Physics is his current trilogy of books that he's writing. I think he's on book number two. He's just come out on that trilogy. And Sean Carroll pointed out what I call Carroll's contradiction. He didn't call it that, but that's what I'm calling it. And he said, like, here's a strange thing about the simulation hypothesis. If simulations happen, then you have this hierarchy. You have realities that simulate realities that simulate realities that simulate realities. And every level of reality must necessarily have less computational capability than the previous layer above it, because it's just a subset of what came before. And so eventually, there must be a level where the computer being used to simulate it is simply not big enough to allow simulations within that simulated reality. So maybe in that world, the most sophisticated simulation you can do is like an, uh, you know, a Super Nintendo version of Donkey Kong or something. Right? That's, like, that's like you get the world's biggest supercomputer. It's like the size of the entire universe. And the most sophisticated simulation you can do is Mario Kart 2. Like that's the most sophisticated simulation you can do. So in that universe, they are essentially what, you know, sterile. You know, to, to think about like having, you know, whether you can have children, they're infertile. They cannot themselves have daughter realities. So Sean Carroll pointed out that there should be many more realities of these daughter realities which are sat right at the bottom of this hierarchy 
where they themselves lack the ability to simulate more reality. So I call this the sewer of reality, the level where you are infertile, you are sterile, you cannot yourselves produce daughter, children realities. And so because there's far more of them than any other type of reality, just because of the branching of each of each level, statistically, we are most likely to live in the sewer level of reality. If that's true, that we live in the sewer of reality, then we are incapable of simulations ourselves. There's the contradiction. We cannot produce simulations ourselves, and yet we are assuming that simulations are possible. So there's a logical contradiction in place. And so Sean Carroll p- rightly points out this, se- this is kind of odd. So I've been thinking about that contradiction a lot recently, and again, how to sort of ingest it into the statistical framework that I was working on before. Um, so I don't have a result just yet, but I've been in correspondence with Sean and been thinking about this a little bit. And I think it's one of the most nuanced and subtle points about simulation argument that is not discussed enough. It's a really brilliant insight. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This animation is a clip from my podcast with Dr. David Kipping. We had an amazing conversation and we went deep on aliens, God, existential threats, possibly colonizing other planets. So if you want to check that out, you can do so here. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.